going to do is we're going to look at a case study, um, the Alex Mazur campaign. Uh, I, I worked with uh, closely um, uh, throughout the 2014 cycle. They, uh, they had a very successful fundraising operation um, uh, and raised uh, $60,000, which was the cap. Um, that was the, uh, the maximum they, they could within the first two months of a 10 month campaign. So by sort of March, uh, uh, they, had, they had raised uh, the cap. So um, in terms of uh, professional and, uh, and efficient process, uh, that's uh, one of the best uh, I've seen. Um, and, uh, and so they've generously offered us the steps um, with which and uh, the ability to share those steps with you um, in terms of, uh, of running a, a fundraising operation. So this will be our, our case study today. So as uh, I'm talking through this, I am going to be hopping um, between the slides and uh, and the nation um, nation builder account to give you a, a sense. Um, I will say though that, uh, that we'll also take a look at PayPal um, because you can if you don't have a nation builder account or say you're using another uh, platform like uh, like WordPress, there are lots of payment processing solutions out there, and you can you know uh, do a Google search. The most uh, straightforward and one that many people are familiar with in terms of giving online is PayPal. So um, I am going to talk about PayPal also because if you do decide to um, uh, proceed with Nation Builder uh, at a later date, then uh, you can easily hook your PayPal account up to Nation Builder. Um, and so that's why we'll focus on on PayPal. Um, but again, uh, providing you an option, say you're going to use uh, a different plat content management system other than Nation Builder. Um, okay, so in the planning and prep, now, uh, of course, this webinar is focused on tools uh, for fundraising. However, uh, we can't divorce um, the tools from uh, the uh, the strategy and the tactics uh, otherwise so um, so we are going to talk a bit uh, about the steps that the campaign took and some of their strategy and as well their approach to managing donors um, in addition to the tools that uh, were used uh, to actually uh, uh, track donations and uh, uh, and then from pledge and until uh, actual payment and thank you um, so in this case uh, the planning and prep phase, you know, when you're getting your fundraising operation underway, and we're we're going to be hosting a, a run for office series uh, uh, later this month and uh, and next. So I will go more into detail in terms of fundraising, actual fundraising strategy. But uh, just for for um, it's it's very important, uh, even as you're selecting your tools for fundraising, to understand the donation rules in your jurisdiction. Um, and so, on a democracy kit. I've got a link here and um, what I'll do is I'll actually just post the link to this presentation to the chat. So that you can all view it. Um, so you can follow along and uh, grab the, the links uh, as you see fit. Okay. Um, and so, Understanding the donation rules in your jurisdiction is critical. Um, and on uh, democracy, at democracykit.org, if you click finance and planning, um, we've, uh, we've got an introduction to compliance module, actually one step before that, that'll, that, that finance and planning link takes you here. So we've got a, our orientation module here um, on democracy kit. And then in orientation, there's create a plan. And as part of creating your uh, your plan, that you're going to want to uh, take a look at finance and legal. Um, and so, worth noting right now, just a reminder that uh, if you haven't seen it before, that the campaign plan plan template that we provide is very robust in Democracy Kit. So if we take a look, and actually, it's particularly relevant for this webinar because um, uh, again, the Mazer campaign was the template, uh, the the do donor of this uh, this template and one that uh, those of us involved in Democracy Kit, many of us were, were very involved with. Um, and so you can see that uh, what we're going to be talking about today is actually one of the templates uh, within this, this broader campaign template. So if we go to 
introduction to compliance and the way that, that where that was linked that again from the orientation um, uh, clicking on introduction com to compliance you could also just search for that uh, on the home page and it would pop up uh, or go to the library and search for it um, so we've got role of an official agent introduction to compliance and then key challenges so um, introduction to compliance so for those of you that that's a new new word uh, compliance would just be uh, compliance with the laws, making sure that uh, you're you're working within uh, the 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 laws of your jurisdiction, um, and so in this case, I'll just open this up. Got and again, if you haven't used Democracy Kit resources before, there's the link to the file or folder, and then you can see the source Google document, which you can copy um, and uh, and edit as you see fit. Uh, now, at, at the moment, we've got uh, introduction to legal and financial compliance uh, in Ontario. We're hoping that we'll have Alberta and other provinces. Um, and so uh, this is one thing, you know, as we go through these election cycles, we're going to be looking to campaigns that use the resource to contribute back. And uh, and so we hope that uh, that you will do so if you're in a ju different jurisdiction. Um, but in this case, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty detailed and... Um, so you can take a look uh, through this document uh, and this doesn't uh, give, uh, this basically provides links to key resources to review. Uh, and so this is something that uh, whoever is managing your fundraising uh, uh, could take a look, a look through. Okay, so that was a first step in uh, and understanding the rules in the jurisdiction. Um, and just a couple of comments on that. Um, there were, uh, you know, in, in Ontario, you can spend uh, money to raise money on a campaign. So, for example, uh, you know, reviewing other financial statements from previous campaigns uh, in your ward is a good way to see how other um, campaigns have allocated their fundraising dollars in different categories, whether that's um, for events or uh, uh, for, you know, marketing collateral or, you know, uh, um, and uh, and and the likes, you know, salaries and 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 pieces like that. So um, you're going to want to take a look through past campaigns. Those uh, past campaign financial statements would be available um, on the city website, typically um, in terms of disclosure. And what you're looking for is, you know, how how they've uh, allocated uh, and their their funds to make sure you're either in line or you might decide to make changes for strategic reasons but uh, but do take a look at uh, at successful campaigns in particular and how they've allocated their funds uh, so an example of that is spending money to raise money if you call something a fundraiser or if something is a fundraiser um, and if you call it a fundraiser it should be a fundraiser um, so uh, and that's one uh, way uh, you can actually spend some money to host that fundraiser that doesn't count towards your cap that's uh, for example in an Ontario context um, and uh, and the rules in this area do differ substantially between Ontario and Alberta so if you're in Alberta and uh, and logged in definitely uh, you're gonna want to uh, maybe use the, the Ontario resources as a reference point but um, but make sure that you're up to speed on the uh, the Alberta uh, um, laws and then your local municipal uh, rules. Okay, um, and so that sort of, you know, uh, high level prep and then in terms of next steps, um, the fundraising coordinator in this case um, made an initial donor prospect list that was largely a spreadsheet. So um, in that case, uh, a Google form was actually circulated. So uh, we, we talked about um, team project tools in the first webinar of Choose Technology. And in this case, uh, a Google form was used. And it was because it was before Nation Builder or it was set up, it was one of the first things uh, once the campaign leadership team started coming together was gathering uh, both the candidates um, uh, suggestions uh, of uh, uh, for donation prospects as well as uh, suggestions from key quote-unquote rainmakers um, and so just uh, you know uh, referring to somebody who's got uh, lots of, uh, of contacts that have uh, giving capacity um, and who's good at asking um, and uh, and so you want uh, in this case there were three or four of those people that were working directly for uh, and with the uh, fundraising coordinator. 
and then the candidate, of course, was submitting names. But actually, in addition, as a, as a third step, I just happen to know that uh, that after the candidate and the rainmakers have put their suggestions in the uh, spreadsheet, then it was opened up to the rest of the uh, campaign volunteer team, and uh, we all put in our names. Um, and so that was all gathered in via a Google form um, and it's very easy to set up a Google form it just populates a Google spreadsheet at which you can you know, download as, a, as a, an Excel spreadsheet or whatnot and you can import into a contact management system whether that's uh, Nation Builder or MailChimp or others so um, if you're gathering in that way it makes it uh, easier for data management down the road um, and donor uh, importing your prospect list into Nation Builder. Um, and so I think what we'll do is right now we'll actually go over um, uh, the process of setting up a prospect in Nation Builder. Um, uh, in this case, though, as I uh, just to, to finish off this slide, the the rainmakers. Um, uh, were each assigned. So basically, you could call them the fundraising leads, or fundraising team members. There were about three to three to five total, um, or uh, four to five total um, on the team. And each of those people, in addition to the candidate, were assigned um, to a prospect. So everybody had a point person, and we can talk about what that looks like in Nation Builder. Um, okay, so let's take a look here. Um, so if you're gathering uh, prospects in a spreadsheet and uh, you were uh, you were going to then you know uh, ask for for contributions uh, online um, again just uh, I won't spend much too much time because uh, the documentation is pretty good on PayPal's site um, you could just very easily, I've just posted this link to uh, the group chat. If you just want to get a, a payment page up, um, you can do it free, uh, straightforward, um, at uh, paypal.com. Uh, you can just uh, create a free PayPal account and get a payment page up. So you don't have to um, be using a system like Nation Builder in order to start taking payments online uh, early on, you know, and again, you want to be clear on when the rules say in terms of when you can start uh, accepting donations. Uh, it's typically when you register and then you've got a bank, you need to have a bank account set up. And, uh, and so there are going to be all sorts of um, uh, considerations there in terms of, uh, of laws you want to be compliant with. However, once you've got your bank account set up, you're ready to go. You can, you know, typically if you're going to bring in larger donations and before you've got a digital system set up, you could uh, be taking checks or interact transfers. Um, and more and more people are liking to give by interact transfer. Um, uh, and you just need to make sure that you're gathering all the information you need to. Uh, if you have to send a form or whatnot, you need to get address and things like that. Um, uh, and then, uh, but if you're going to give online, uh, a tool like PayPal can be a free and quick option uh, if somebody wants to make a payment before you've got other systems set up. Okay, so that's all I'll say on, on PayPal. Um, but uh, once you are you decide what contact management system you're going to use, we're looking at Nation, uh, the Nation Builder backend now. And again, we, uh, we went over in quite uh, uh, detail around Nation Builder for municipal campaigns a couple of webinars ago. And so you can refer back uh, to, uh, to that in terms of actually accessing the system and some of the basics. Um, but uh, in Nation Builder, you've got the ability, as I was referring to earlier, of hooking up payment processors. So the processors that you can hook up um, to Nation Builder uh, are Stripe, PayPal, uh, Authorize.net. Those are the Canadian, so you can see here the CA uh, engines and pay, uh, PayPal PayFlow Pro. So um, uh, typically, campaigns uh, will either use PayPal or Stripe. Those are free options. Uh, PayFlow Pro and Authorize.net uh, both cost extra. I have not seen any campaigns, municipal campaigns, using Authorize.net, mainly because it's relatively heavy uh, lift and uh, to actually get that uh, integration set up um, and more used for organizations or institutions that are uh, that are processing online transactions through Nation Builders. So typically, you're going to start with uh, with PayPal. Uh, those are most of the campaigns uh, are going to be using, or you could uh, you could get Stripe set up. Um, and uh, again, it's uh, it's pretty uh, straightforward. You are going to want to 
uh, just follow the instructions that Nation Builder provides and PayPal and essentially you're going to hook up the uh, the payment processor um, and uh, and then um, you'll be able to uh, add things like special instructions um, for your jurisdiction. So let's take a look at a, an example payment processor here. So we've got one here, PayPal Express. And you, down here you can see contribution rules, right? Um, you're able to um, add contribution rules and you could actually um, uh, require that somebody uh, that the uh, individual uh, indicate that they're compliant with those contribution rules okay so uh, for example a good example is say if you've got a spending cap like $750 donation or think in uh, in uh, well, Alberta it's closer to, or in Calgary in particular it's closer to say $5,000 um, and so uh, so that you might want to uh, indicate on the form um, uh, and require that people check off that they're compliant with that. Okay, so um, now that uh, we've got, say, an individual, uh, well, we've got our payment processor um, hooked up and we want to uh, import a uh, list of prospects. I'm just going to use an example. This is a Twitter account that uh, has interacted with the the nation that we're looking at here, um, and so it's uh, it's just an example here. Um, but it allows us to look at how you might track. So we can imagine that this is a donor prospect that you've imported into the system, and you've got here become a say become a donor path. This become a donor path is standard in Nation Builder, um, and so uh, you might want to uh, add all of your uh, prospects to a donor path and say they're a potential donor, right? And that adds them to a path in Nation Builder. Okay, and now you've got two options. And as, I, as we saw in the case study, the, um, the fundraising coordinator and team assigned a point person to every single um, donor and uh, prospect. And so uh, you could either assign the path to a prospect. So let's say, um, we wanted to assign the path to Riley in this case. Um, we can do so. Um, as well, you've got the option to assign a point person to manage the entire relationship, not just the particular path with this individual. And that may be more appropriate in, uh, in some cases. So we could take a look here. Again, uh, we could add a point person and all that does is it links the or uh, indicates the, uh, the, the point person and every person in Nation Builder can have one point person. Okay, so um, if, for example, this were a key contact that were was involved with, uh, say, as a volunteer or doing something outside of uh, just providing a, a donation and you had another point person you were assigning, you might want to use the path uh, and then they get the person can uh, who's assigned to them um, uh, can have a different person as their primary point person, but for uh, donation could be uh, one of the fundraising leads. Okay, so if you could, we're, we're gonna pause for questions in, a, in just a couple of minutes. So if you could just be start thinking about so any questions you've got, uh, we can dive right in. Um, but I do wanna just finish these uh, this case study points before we move on along to communications. Um, so in terms of other steps and uh, on the fundraising, uh, after assigning folks uh, prospects to a point person, um, the coordinator organized um, team phone calls to follow up and track each uh, result. Um, and so that was regular calls, uh, again, point people in order that they were coordinated and to track, uh, you know, the progress. Uh, that was that was a team call that happened regularly. Um, there was a decision made to host an initial ticketed fundraiser uh, to uh, get you know friendly donors in early. So that was uh, 
in February. So this was a campaign that started in January. It was 10 months, so very long. So again, this is not the, the writ period. That was later uh, in the fall. However, the registration date for candidates, in that, this case, was January. And so this fundraiser was held uh, just over a month after launch. Um, and uh, and that was in order to, to make sure those initial prospects who had uh, who'd been identified and again entered into Nation Builder uh, were followed up. Um, and then the, the candidate personally called to thank every early donor. So that was key that actually every single person who gave uh, a gift um, early on um, was thanked personally by the candidate. A very nice touch, especially for those uh, that come on right away. Um, most donations, uh, so this is again during the campaign. So up until this point, planning and, and prep and uh, well, this fundraising event that referred to is one of the first things that happened. But really that fundraising event marked the, the point uh, where you're uh, between the initial prospect uh, generation and then actually um, uh, moving into the, uh, the campaign when at that point the uh, door knocking was really ramping up through March, April and into the, the summer when it was getting warmer. So the, the focus of the campaign at the early on was very much on fundraising. The strategy in this case was to bring in dollars as quickly as possible so that the campaign could focus on door knocking. And just to give you context in terms of the Mazer campaign and their success, they were the second closest. Only one incumbent was, um, was defeated in Toronto in um, 2014. And in terms of vote spread, the Mazer campaign against a, a very strong incumbent was second uh, uh, closest uh, after the one incumbent that won. Uh, they lost by uh, around 800 votes. So it was a real nail biter. And uh, uh, but uh, all around really uh, solid, uh, solid operation. Um, so in terms of during the campaign, most, most people after the campaign early on, it would have been say checks or interact transfers or whatnot. But then once the website was launched and, uh, and that fundraising event happened, then most donation uh, donors gave directly through nation builder. And I'll just show an example of, uh, of an existing, um, uh, Albertan, uh, example here. So if we, if we go to a candidate, say Esmahan's uh, website here, you can see that uh, there's a donate button. This is this site is on Nation Builder, and um, and so once you've if, you've, if you're using Nation Builder, um, you're able to take donations directly through the site, uh, and that was again if you're not and you want to set up a, another payment processor, you could use PayPal directly to achieve a similar result, and you could link to the page or you could send uh, your donors a link. Uh, uh, to process payment uh, directly, if that's what they're asking for. Um, so most donations went uh, directly through Nation Builder, and the coordinator monitored every donation that came in and uh, and followed up if something was irregular. And there was an automated thank you email, um, uh, and. David, so the automated thank you email came through Nation Builder, and we can take a look at how that's set up. Um, but uh, David uh, uh, sent a follow up with personal for larger for larger donations that had some context. Um, okay, so I just want to take a look at uh, at again. If we go back to our example here. Um, you, so, so I. Most campaigns know about the um, uh, the donation capability of Nation Builder, but you may not have uh, used the pledge uh, capability. So under in Nation Builder, you've got this ability to log pledges, which is quite a, a useful feature. So if we go to our example here, uh, a contact, say we had uh, a pledge of $250. So we're not able to take the money um, yet because we haven't registered, but we've confirmed that this person either through they've committed through our Google form or they've uh, committed verbally or, or by email or whatnot. And then you can log a pledge. So if we click new pledge, here we can say the person has committed $250. Uh, you could even assign a tracking code, right? So it could uh, probably overkill for uh, for a, a startup municipal campaign, but you know you might want to track uh, uh, in terms of say source, whether it's at a, an event or whether it was uh, uh, you know uh, 
uh, from effort from your direct outreach. Uh, you could assign you can assign a fundraiser to allocate that to you, and um, and then you could uh, if we save that pledge here. Okay, so it'll pop up, um, and you can then add a donation to that. Say they this person gives by check, right? Um, then you can allocate that, say, and uh, process that and turn that pledge into a donation. Uh, or um, if uh, uh, if the individual gives, say, online or uh, or whatnot, then you could just uh, remove the pledge. So pledges, it, that is a useful way to keep track of, um, uh, of donations before they come in. Uh, another way, uh, pledges, an easy way to do this is certainly just with a spreadsheet. Um, uh, in in many cases, uh, that's that's totally sufficient just to keep track in the spreadsheet. You could even use the same spreadsheet that uh, that you've set up to gather prospects, right? Just track your pledges, import uh, folks into your contact management system, and then from then on, uh, just be tracking actual donations rather than just pledges. In Nation Builder, similarly uh, similar to pledges, um, you can go to Finances tab and. Either you would give uh, somebody would give online, and we'll take a look at how that uh, that is processed in a moment here. Um, but you could also add an offline donation, say like a, a check again or an interact payment, um, and you could come in here and you just choose, let's say, check or uh, electronics fund transfer, um, and uh, and then you can keep track of the check number, address, and everything you need for those uh, those fundraising forms down the road. Um, just We'll just go here to look at an example donation page. Okay, so we're looking at an example donation page in Nation Builder. Again, um, we're going quickly through Nation Builder. We've gone, uh, we've spent a whole webinar, a couple of webinars uh, ago on it. And I do want to spend at least 25 minutes on the communication side of the webinar and take your questions. So um, uh, in Nation Builder, I just clicked on a website. I'm going now to um, uh, the donation page and uh, we can, uh, you can add in, you know, there's lots of settings you can configure and whatnot pretty self-explanatory. Um, just a couple things to note here. This is where you choose your, your payment processor, right? So you would, uh, you'd select, you can have multiple payment processors depending, uh, you know, on where you want your money to go. Uh, and then you can configure your auto response. Um, and this is where what uh, the case study and the case study referring to having an auto response, uh, you've got in Nation Builder a default um, receipt. And again, um, you may, by default, it calls it a donation receipt. And so one thing I would just suggest if you are using this platform or others is just be very careful about using the word donation. And you'll see these variables don't show up actually in the email. These are just uh, populating fields from, uh, based on the donation donor name or whatnot. But actually this text here, payment receipt, called it that rather than donation receipt just because uh, you know donation receipt has a particular connotation in terms of getting uh, an actual tax receipt, charitable tax receipt. And as a campaign, you're not a charity, you may be able to issue a rebate form, say in Toronto, that's the case, um, but you're not able to um, uh, issue a charitable tax receipt. So you just want to be careful about that. Um, uh, okay, so that's the auto response, and that's the message that was sent. And actually, you could make it uh, quite a bit more detailed. Let's say then with the one we've got here, you could um, uh, you could give some instructions about when when and how they'll get their um, their rebate forms um, at the end of the campaign. Uh, you could talk about how else to get involved in the campaign. Uh, these auto response messages are, are uh, really valuable in terms of uh, quickly getting the donor the information they need to stay involved, but also understand how uh, what they can expect from the campaign down the road. Um, so that's uh, that gives you a sense of how that automated uh, response was sent uh, and, in that, and also how donors can be tracked. Um, and then finally, um, the can't uh, forget that, uh, and it's important to note just the that the after the after the campaign, while other areas of the campaign, you know, especially on the say on the comm side or whatnot, may uh, be able to wind down a little quicker um, on the fundraising and the the financial compliance side of things. There is a lot of uh, of uh, 
work that needs to be done afterwards to prepare the you know financial statements to um, submit to the to the municipality as well as issue any donor forms or or whatnot and this is uh, you know it's very important that you spend the time that's that's needed and as well that your volunteers are uh, you know whoever is the fundraising coordinator or the legal advisor and whatnot know that uh, that it's it's going to be a bunch of work after the campaign to to wrap things up so that uh, in terms of our case study those are the steps that uh, that the Mazer campaign um, took uh, they had uh, again as I said they raised their cap within just a couple of months it was uh, a really a smooth operation uh, they the tools they used were Google Forms um, they used uh, spreadsheet in terms of uh, in order to track the prospects which was populated by the Google Forms that was then imported into Nation Builder at the time paths in Nation Builder wasn't uh, uh, wasn't released so actually uh, they did use Nation Builder but not paths but since then paths has been released that's what I showed you with adding a prospect to the path which is uh, a good great way to track and assign point people and then they um, had their online payment processor which was PayPal and um, uh, and then uh, tracked uh, and issued auto responses and followed up individually uh, the earlier on the candidate followed up individually with each uh, each larger or each donor uh, and then down the road the fundraising coordinator in addition to the auto response message provided um, uh, an additional follow-up with some for especially for larger donations with some context so um, I'd love to take any questions you have um, right